Hi, this lesson is about how to describe photocards number 7. Hola, esta lección es sobre cómo describir tarjetas fotográficas número 7. Hi, welcome again to Spanish for London. I am Laura, and in this series of GCSE Spanish, how to get better marks, today we will describe a new photocard. So watch the photo carefully, watch all the details. I will teach you today how to describe this particular photo using the verbs or the verbal forms hay, está, es, and tiene, because it's very, very frequent to mix up these forms. Of course, this topic must be explained in depth. This is only a sample for a photo card, but you need to study them properly. That's why you have all the lessons in our whole course. Let's start. Empecemos. Okay, first the forms. Hay, there is or there are. Está, remember, when you want to say that something or somebody is located in a place, you always say está in Spanish, never is. Es belongs to the verb ser, whereas está belong to the, belongs to the verb estar. Both of them meaning to be. But there is a big problem with these two verbs because they are most of the time bad expressions. Explained. So, if somebody tells you that in Spanish we use ser for permanent situations and estar for non-permanent situations, this person doesn't know Spanish at all. Listen, compare these sentences. The dog is brown, the dog is here, the dog is dead. Okay. When I say the dog is brown in Spanish, we say el perro es marrón using the verb ser. This form es belongs to the verb ser. Okay, we use this form because this is an essential feature. But when I say the dog is here, I'm talking about the location. Where is the dog? So remember, I told you before that when I want to say where is something or somebody, I must use está. So in this case, I say el perro está aquí. But if it doesn't matter if this is permanent or not or non-permanent. When I say el perro está aquí, probably the dog is not here forever. It's not non-permanent. And I say está. But if I say London is in England, London is in England forever. So it's absolutely permanent, and I use está. So again, if someone tells you that we use está in Spanish for non-permanent features, you can ask this person, okay, explain this to me. Why in Spanish we say, for London is in England, Londres está en Inglaterra. And another very good example, why in Spanish we say, for the dog is dead, el perro, está muerto if the dog is dead forever. Do you see? As you can see in my examples, and especially in this one, the dog is dead, el perro está muerto, we can use estar for absolutely permanent features. So again, if someone tells you that we, use in, we in Spanish use estar for non-permanent situations, this person doesn't know Spanish. So remember that you have to study ser and estar properly. That's why I will give you some examples today and you have a specific lesson about this in our whole course. So, hay, está, es o tiene, he or she has. Okay, and we will also see the forms también, meaning also, to or as well, and tampoco, Neither or neither. Okay, let's see now our photo. Hay una playa y muchas personas tomando el sol. También hay algunas personas caminando. Okay, here I put there is or there are. There is a beach and many 
people sunbathing and there are also some people walking. También hay algunas personas caminando. So remember, to put more elements in your phrases, use también, to also as well. Hay varios barcos. So there are several boats. Hay varios barcos. Algunos están en la costa y otros están navegando cerca de la costa. Ok, now take a look. I put están. So the boats are located in a particular place. So now for location I use estar. Some of them are on the shore and some others are sailing near the shore. Remember, cerca means near, while lejos is the opposite, meaning far. So, cerca, near, lejos, far. Ok. La gente tiene tumbonas, sombrillas y toallas. Now, for a moment, forget the parts into brackets and see the rest of the sentence. The have uh, deck chairs, um, parasols, and towels. Ok, if a student says la gente tiene tumbonas, sombrillas y toallas, it's absolutely fine. But again, how can I enlarge the sentence showing more vocab, putting more elements, and enhancing my expression, saying in order to para. Remember, this is a particular difficult topic for you guys because in English we have for, while in Spanish to say for we have por and para. So you have to study this in a specific lesson, which is of course in our whole course. So, but basically when you want to say because of something you say por and in order to do something you say para but it's more complex so this is only uh, the first brief explanation so you can enlarge your sentence saying la gente tiene sombrillas para protegerse del sol so the people have parasols in order to protect themselves from the sun, y toallas in order to sunbathe on the sand, para tomar el sol sobre la arena. ¿Mm? Ok, now, es un día fantástico, no hace viento ni hay olas en el mar, tampoco hay nubes, so it's a great day, it's a fantastic day. Es un día fantástico. I put es here because for uh, the description um, es un día fantástico, es una casa grande. For physical descriptions we use the uh, verb ser. Mm? Of course this is only one particular scenario. You have to see all the cases when we use ser in Spanish. It's a great day, es un día fantástico, it's not windy, no hace viento, and there are no, um, no waves in the sea. Ni hay olas en el mar, no hay olas en el mar, y tampoco hay nubes, nubes son clouds, so neither clouds, tampoco hay nubes. Recuerden, también versus tampoco. ¿Mm? Y finalmente, creo que están en Grecia o en el Caribe. Remember, make inferences. Yeah? Your uh, teachers say all the time, give reasons, make inferences. So, creo que, I believe that they are located, do you see locations where we start in Greece or in the Caribbean Sea? Creo que están en Grecia o en el Caribe. Obviamente, es verano y la gente está de vacaciones. Ok, es verano. To say, the days of the week. Es lunes, it's Monday. Es miércoles, it's Wednesday. The month of the year, um, it's January, es enero, it's April, es abril, or the seasons, es verano, it's summer, es invierno, it's winter. We use the verb ser. ¿Mm? 
Eh, and then, la gente está de vacaciones. Well, this is a fixed construction. When you say I am on holidays, it's always estar de vacaciones. In some context, uh, you always use the verb estar. For example, estar de vacaciones, to be on holidays, because it's a particular state. I will explain this in the lesson about the verb estar. Okay, now you have a whole description of a photocard using I, está, es, tiene, también y tampoco. Let's see uh, our whole description. So you can post the video and practice pronunciation mocking me. Ok. Hay una playa y muchas personas tomando el sol. También hay algunas personas caminando. Hay varios barcos. Algunos están en la costa y otros están navegando cerca de la costa. La gente tiene tumbonas, sombrillas para protegerse del sol y toallas para tomar el sol sobre la arena. Es un día fantástico. No hace viento ni hay olas en el mar. Tampoco hay nubes. Creo que están en Grecia o en el Caribe. Obviamente es verano y la gente está de vacaciones. And that's the end of the lesson. Now, check the descriptions below if you want to receive a gift from Spanish for London, which is a video about 10 common mistakes made by students. And remember that we will launch soon a new course about verbal tenses, where I will teach you all that you need for your GCSC, how to use every single chance, all the irregularities, all the forms in depth without mistakes, without inaccuracies. I will explain all that you need to know and how to use one, two, three and more tenses when talking and writing. And if this was useful for you, of course, spread the word to help more students like you. See you next time. Nos vemos la próxima. Bye bye. Adios.